Welcome to the first part chat uh, session for the celebration of 30 years of positive deviance. I'm here with my colleague and friend Jane Lewis, who will uh, introduce herself uh, shortly. Together, we would like to talk today about the transforming aspect of uh, the positive deviance approach that is not often uh, talked about. Briefly, we will go about what is that social organization change that the TV approach promotes, how does it do it, and um, finally, we'll talk a little bit about the values that underscore the, the approach and that, that uh, allows that its social and um, organization change to be sustainable. Thank you. Um, I met Monique and Jerry as part of a follow-up to the Coaching and Consulting for Change program at the Said Business School, University of Oxford, when we had an extra module and invited Jerry and Monique because we were all fascinated to learn more about positive deviance. They came because we were in Marrakesh and the connection between the CCC program and Jerry and Monique and positive deviance, which we'd originally learned about through Richard Pascal, has lasted ever since and is still being taught on the program to this day. I was part of the second cohort and I learned so much and I've done my best to try to put it into practice in the UK. So we're just going to sort of talk about what we found under these headings. So the social change, first of all, Monique, how do you see that? Well, evidently it's as, as again, I said, it hasn't been well documented but uh, it has of course social change many different aspects it has to do with the leadership the role of leadership the collective self-efficacy of the people involved the uh, what do i have here? because i wrote it down the um, information equity how do you share all the information and um, i would talk about the sense of ownership that has to, this four aspect of a social and organization change, something we may together will talk about, but particularly we will talk about how, how does the PD process enable this social and organization change to happen? Indeed. Yes, my experience has been um, with the projects I've done in the UK, um, that the social change that you see happens both with the agencies that you're working with and also with the community members. So I've worked on a range of projects across the UK, but it was particularly noticeable in a project in Haringey, which is a deprived part of North London that we did. The uh, borough is part, uh, very diverse indeed, and it has a lot of problems with um, what are called troubled families over here and we did some work to support them to help themselves help themselves whereas the usual approach was to have a very in, intense one-to-one -one intervention with social workers and whilst we'd achieved that in terms of helping people be more independent the main thing that we noticed to start with was the amount of work we actually had to put in with the participants in the community to get them to trust each other but once they did and the all the very conscious biases and prejudices between different ethnic groups, social socioeconomic groups, were shown to really be only the top of underneath a, a common humanity. The first process was to actually get to each other to understand their common humanity. And my colleague Audrey did a fantastic job of working with them to trust each other before they could go anywhere with their problems. But the problem definition bit, going on to the next question to a certain extent, was the thing that actually helped people get out from this sort of emotional stuff and into the factual stuff and to appreciate each other. So that happened and also on the other side of that project, the different agencies working around the troubled families, because each of the troubled families would have quite a few different agencies working together. The communication and again, the trust and the understanding of each other's needs improved tremendously. Yeah, it resonates a lot with me and many examples come to my head or my eyes. Or my, I remember vividly 
all uh, the things that, uh, when we talk about social change, it's a bit general, but what uh, we saw, and it was not always intentional, but it happened through that process, is that uh, stigma, uh, for instance, uh, against, uh, in the case of, uh, of the, the school in Argentina, where five schools in Misiones uh, province had to work with the, um, with uh, their constituents which were actually parents and uh, there was a big animosity and uh, stigma between uh, the school and the parents because the school were educated people white and the the, the students and their parents were guaranis they were uh, indigenous people and uh, they just at the beginning of uh, trying to bring them together uh, to develop their own vision of what they wanted to achieve. It was very difficult because they didn't want, the teachers didn't want to talk to the teachers. So again, the process of inviting people who never sit together at the same table is a long process and uh, it requires, as you were saying, a lot of, uh, uh, of skill from the facilitator to build, to build trust. And there's a case also in, in the hospital acquired infection in the US, in the hospital we all work with, there was a, a surgeon had never sat at the table with a cleaner. And of course, they're both at each end of this very difficult problem, which is hospital acquired infection. The, the surgeon has to make sure that he, he doesn't transmit infection and evidently the cleaners are the frontline workers who have to make sure that the the not so much the instrument but the room the environment um, is clean and so it's the process that the pd does of bringing together people who never talked to each other before that is so powerful yes. another if you look at um, organization change i would mention the fact that, that for instance in vietnam that story of a uh, of chan using PD for child malnutrition in Vietnam, we brought together entities, government entities that had never worked together on the issue of child wound malnutrition. It was the People's Committee, which is the political and administrative branch of the government, the Women's Union, the Farmers Union, and uh, that's it, I think. Uh, and uh, then, and uh, of course, no, the health system. And they never had sat together. So basically to say, how do you bring people, organization that to work together across silos? So it's not a vertical type of integration. It's more like we call horizontal integration that helps you and evidently the communities there as well. Yes, indeed. And I think that helps the scalability. So it's scalability, perhaps in a different way that many people conceptualize it. But because you've got all these different parts of the network, each of it starts to then change a bit. And then the change then ripples out. So each individual change is quite small, in, again in Haringey, in terms of how the agencies worked with the, um, the actual community. But together and, and working together, it rippled out into a much different cultural, organisational cultural approach to, to the situation. Um, which has um, lasted. Um, moving on to more about perhaps the PD process, and we're talking about how mutually together understanding different facets of the problem is really important. So the problem definition is the thing that is really, as I see it, the thing that takes the time. It's like the foundation underneath everything that then you can build on. And if you don't get that right, then it doesn't tend to happen very well after that. Um, but the other thing I think was the fact that um, by then asking people to find the exceptions who seem to be able to cope despite the particular problem um, really opens up a sense of possibility. And um, that's only been the case again in the in the UK where people who for survivors of domestic abuse you know found it difficult to shake off the victimhood but once they found different ways of working and people who did 
it works very well to help them move on and become more independent. And I think Lars has found that with the other, Lars Tusen, our colleague, has found that with other domestic abuse projects around the world. Is that something, I get the impression it's something you found, is that the same for you? Uh, in, uh, yeah, it works in uh, ways that uh, it's sort of an unattended aspect of the approach. We tried to focus on a very specific problem and the underlying causes which, which are very difficult to handle, like um, lack of uh, cohesion within an organization or uh, gender discrimination, an uh, issue that you cannot attack directly with a group of people because it's too big, too controversial. But by focusing on the specific problem, the, those underlying issue gets to by looking at those people who are successful and allow, allows the people to actually deal with the underlying issues. It's a very interesting uh, process. Jerry uh, used to, my husband Jerry Stoney used to say that focusing on the small problem and inviting so many stakeholders to sit together and collectively look at it creates a uh, forge people to have new relationship with each other, understand each other better, and then um, what he calls uh, enlarge increases the solution space and actually addresses underlying root problems that could not be addressed uh, uh, head on when you start this project. So uh, it's like we take a laser beam approach to, to a huge difficulty, but we just focus on one problem together that we all agree we want to solve that creates motivation, this is a collective motivation. Absolutely. The desire to find the solution and then of course finding solution within is an extraordinary liberating as well. And then uh, through that process of getting to know each other, etc. Uh, it has that ripple effect and address taboo subjects that uh, people would have difficulty to, to address head on. That's why sometimes PD uh, in, in a hospital particularly, they would pay a very expensive consultancy firm and consultant to come and, and create what they call culture change in an organization in the hospital because they feel that the culture is getting is not working very well. In one of the hospitals I work with in, with in Connecticut, the, the big, well, the, the director, the CEO wanted uh, uh, the staff to work with us on hand washing. But the staff said, that's not the problem. The problem is we do not communicate at all level between administration and clinician, between all, all groups working in that hospital. We just don't communicate. And we spent five sessions with them to figure out how, because if the problem is lack of communication within all the different uh, sectors of the hospital, it was too enormous for us to tackle. So said, you must find a very concrete problem that everybody will agree on, that we can, you know, uh, sort of, agree and work on and then that bigger problem would be solved and they actually found it they found that actually um, what they call medication reconciliation getting the patient at when the patient in is uh, sent home after being in a hospital they would maybe given a new sets of medication and they they had actually a little group working on the fact that they they were suspicious that many it was a relapse in the patient because the patient were not taking the medication properly, the new medication. So it was a big problem in communication, but it's a, not a small problem. But by actually working on that problem, they were able to change the whole, the way they, they work together. Yes, indeed. So, um, and that's happened certainly with uh, groups of social workers that I worked with. Again, they said, you know, a whole system is broken. Um, but actually in looking how they personally use their time and the interaction between them and their computer system, which was causing them a lot of irritation, but which was a given and not to be changed, 
Um, they actually were able to, to find data to show how people found different ways of working with a very big workload and have a better work relationship with their service users, as they call them, and prove to the management actually the computer system wasn't working properly and was eating up a lot of time as well. So it was a sort of win-win all the way around. Um, to, pr to just bring things together, we said we would talk about the sort of fundamental values that under under underscore that or the principles, as I call them, that we work to. We've already alluded to them in terms of expanding the solution space and indirectly about getting ownership, not buy-in. And I found those as a practitioner absolutely vital, but hard to manage. <laughs> so to get, as you say, the surgeons to let go or uh, the, the boss to allow his people to have a say. Um, are there any other um, important principles that you think have contributed to the success of PD and wicked problems? Yeah, I think uh, from my point of view and with Jerry, the reason we were attracted to the positive defense approach is that we found that there were this native intelligence, but at the same time, we have a very humanistic approach to, to the world. We believe in the capacity for goodness that actually people are locked. Sometimes they are destructive or not cooperating because of a problem they face. Mm -hmm. And if we bring them together and have them discover what works in a very human, uh, very respectful way and giving, yeah, showing that they, that they have the capacity to do it that they're at the center of it all, the sense of ownership, we would, it would work and it has worked so far. So it's for us, it's a belief in uh, this capacity for, for, for goodness. Another aspect that helps with, uh, in terms of facilitating the process to make sure that the sense of ownership is really in the people is that uh, we actually break all the rules, which is we don't look professional, we don't act professional. We try to reach people at the most fundamental level. So we show vulnerability, we, we emotion. We say all the time, we don't know. I don't know, who knows? And we use this, um, this um, interaction with people where the question is asked, we always turn the question to the group. Is anybody, is anybody here? Does anybody here as an answer to that question? So we always deflect um, the, the interaction, the communication within the group. So yes. we're able to, in a way, take a, so we're maybe a catalyst. We create that opportunity for people to be together, mm -hmm. but the space will be occupied and uh, I do this physically by being maybe more present at the beginning of the session and I actually disappear. Uh, I don't speak at the end. They're just working on their issues mm -hmm. by themselves. So that's a facilitating side of, yeah. of uh, giving their a form of respect as well. Yes. I think for me as a novice, um, yeah. it was about... You wanted Sorry. to talk about compassion. Remember? <laughs> yes, sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. I hope it records all right. Um, just to, to say, as a, a novice to PD, how I found PD changed my mindset was through the, the little phrases you use in your training about ownership, not buy in, about acting your way into a new way of thinking, all the questioning back into the group, as you've said, and also linking that with the liberating structures facilitation approach which works very well together um, but particularly that the group is the guru and building that sense of confidence within the group has been the big eye-opener for me and the agency people that worked with us because they really didn't believe that the people we were working with could ever achieve the kind of things that they actually did um, so um, you know people who were in the Troubled Families Initiative who suddenly realized that they could negotiate with authority, that they could have a voice. Um, a group of uh, people on an estate who took the initiative to ask 
about how, how things were worrying on the estate about antisocial behavior but also about family breakdown who then created their own solutions based on what worked in the families that didn't have family breakdown and as I, i've mentioned to you this particular last program on the estate is was still going from 2015 to covid all run to help families by the community for the community with agencies only around the edges if they were needed not running it and telling them what to do so it was very powerful so i think we're out of time <laughs> um, but i think we hopefully have covered everything that we said we set out to do is there any last word monique that you want to close with but thank you for your time in my fireside chat Oh no, it's okay. We just want to invite the listeners or people who who pick um, up this fire chat to get their insights for those who have used the PD approach or those who want to use the, the approach to to share their insight on the on the format on the platform that we are going that we are putting this fire chat on. Yes. Please give your own impression and, and insight on this uh, topic thank you indeed and also um if you're hoping to attend do put your ideas of what you want covered during the particular session on the 15th of december so thank you from us and um look forward to seeing you on the 15th bye 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 did it go well